What's good people? It's Dan with the Corporate Deep Beats and you're watching another beat showcase. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created this Rick Ross type beat. Not per se, it's really as much a Rick Ross beat, but it just has some of the elements that I could picture Rick Ross actually rapping over. You could also find a, a number of different artists on it. There is some nice elements in here. The drums are very kind of uh, crisp and clean and there's some nice string sounds on it. Overall, the beat is pretty simple and pretty basic. I try to keep it as simple and open as possible. A lot of hip hop artists today, especially with the trap uh, music that's out there right now, they like very minimalist beats. Sometimes it's pretty difficult to create minimalist beats, but this time I think I got something that has a nice drum sound, a nice uh, 808 sound in there, clean, and just a little bit of string sounds there to kind of complement the whole beat. I'll just play a little section of the intro on the verse and then we can, um, uh, I'll get into how I created the beat. So the beat's called The Return. It's available at thecorporatebeats.com and it's at 140 BPM. Okay, and that's just as much as I'm going to play right now. If you want to listen to the whole beat, there'll be a link in the description. Um, so we'll just start off with the intro and we'll kind of think of what we use to create this beat. So the first one is called Riff 1 and we'll just see where I use that. Now we'll just pull this down. It's a salient synth. So it's a synth in synthesizer in salient. And salient is one of my favorite synthesizers. I've kind of collected a lot of different sounds that I've found from other producers and stuff like that over the years in music production. And I've kind of just, I kind of bend them to my own liking or I layer them with other instruments from different, um, with other sounds and different uh, synthesizers. So we'll just take a look at the MIDI and we'll play the riff. It's kind of like a bell kind of synthesizer sound. It's got a little bit of stereo spread on it and some reverb and I've caught anything below 250. And that seems pretty basic so far. Nothing too complicated there. Typical kind of scaled um, trap melody uh, with a synthesizer. Again, I've layered, I've layered that sound with another synthesizer from Salient called, I uh, don't know, I cannot wait to see what this is called. And it's called Key Space Monkey. And I think I must have um, changed the names of them. And we'll just see what spread. I have a little bit of stereo spread on there on the synth. And the EQ is a little bump at 690 and anything below 75 hertz is cut. That's just to give space for the other instruments that come in in a file. 
So we'll just listen to them together, see what they sound like together. And they're just layered synths, nothing crazy there. It's a bit, bit bland so far. We added some distortion bass. This is also in salient. And we boosted a little at 250 hertz, cut anything below 2500k, and cut anything below 44 hertz. And that's just to make space for my 808 that comes in a while. We're just kind of using this like a distorted guitar, really. And it's a very slow climb on that bass. Very basic, nothing too, too interesting there. Then we have some strings in there just to create tension. And they follow the bass guitar, but they uh, just build the mood. And it's just cinema strings within Logic. It's in the ESX uh, synthesizer in Logic. Nice clean sound there from those strings. I've cut anything below 5000 hertz and I've cut anything below 52 um, for the low end, dB from the low end. And they're just to build tension in the opening section. They also come in uh, just before the hook, uh, which is another string. The hook, this is the main hook in the whole song, and this comes in just at the chorus. cinema strings, uh, modern strings, sorry, my mistake. And we'll just take a look at the EQ, what I've done for that. And we boosted a little at 200 hertz and boosted a little bit at 3,500K and we've cut anything below 40 hertz. It's just a simple melody, nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing insane there or not and that's the whole intro it's pretty basic not in, uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible okay you get the idea in it so we'll just move on to the verse And you hear the kick drum there, standard kick drum that I use, clean sounding, we'll just take a look at the EQ, this common EQ that I use, cut a little bit at 2, uh, 2 dB at 730, and I cut anything below 10k, cut anything below 20 hertz. And we'll just stick in the snare, see what that sounds like, there's two snares here, so I've layered the snare, and just listen to the first one and so on. Very common drum beat. Boom, clap, boom, boom, clap, boom, boom. And you can hear it, it's very simple. The second snare sound is just there to tighten that original snare sound. And then the hi hats come in. They kind of give it a whole life then once the hi hats come in. And there's a nice snare roll in the hi-hats. We'll just take a look at that now. 
a second now they're a longer loop so let's just take a look at what i did there there are two there are a longer loop uh, there So there's a there's a snare roll there. There's a little so there's a little skip there, a little skip there, and then there's a longer one at the end. Okay, and we have our 808 that comes in. And we cut a little bit of the 808 out in different sections just to add variation in the sound. Let me just see what I put on the 808. Not much on the 808. Cut anything below 1K and cut anything below 2 dB or 20 uh, decibels just to make space. There's a second hat that comes in here as well. It's an open hat. It just comes in spe specific sections. Okay. And that's really it. That's really it with everything with the beat. There's nothing crazy about it. The the distorted bass only comes in at the uh, the pre-chorus and the the chorus. That's all. That's all the the distorted bass comes in, at. and that just kind of defines it from makes it different from the hook. So we'll just play from the the verse to the pre-chorus. really it there's nothing really else to it I've got some parallel compression on my um, on my 808 and that's the vintage FET compressor that I have on some distortion on there as well and I have some compression on my drums and I'm also using the FET compressor on there a little bit of distortion it's a lot more aggressive um, the compression on my drums. I don't usually put compression directly on my drums because you never know how much compression are on these drum samples that you find online or wherever you buy them from. And uh, they're not r original, just raw sounds. They're obviously processed sounds in the first place. So what I usually do is just mix in a slight bit of parallel compression just to kind of give the whole track a lift, a little bit of spreader to make a, a little bit of the room in the in the mix i'll be very subtle with that as well i don't put on a lot on and the linear eq on the stereo output just kind of makes boosts my kicks and uh, boosts a little bit of the mids as well where the strings seem to dominate in the mix and the uh, uh, adaptive limiter is just to give the, the whole song a boost at the end and that's exactly how i created this rick ross beat uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe I'll check you out in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.